Hello, and thanks for joining this video on solving an op-amp circuit using the negative feedback approach. Op-amp circuits can initially seem intimidating, but once you have worked a few examples, they really are quite straightforward. Let's work this example op-amp circuit that might look a little complicated at first, but by taking one step at a time, I think you'll see that the problem isn't all that difficult. Here is an op-amp circuit with resistors, two voltage sources, and a current source. The problem is to find the voltage at the output of the circuit, VO, and the current out of the op-amp, IX. Let's review the op-amp circuit decision tree to determine what approach we should take. The first question we ask is, does this op-amp circuit have negative feedback? To determine if negative feedback is present, we look for some connection between the output of the op-amp and the inverting input of the op-amp. This circuit does have negative feedback because there is a connection from the output of the op-amp to the inverting input of the op-amp through the negative 4 volt voltage source and the 2k ohm resistor. So we know this circuit is some kind of linear op-amp circuit. Then we ask, do we recognize the circuit as a common op-amp circuit, like an inverting amplifier or non-inverting amplifier? I don't recognize this circuit as a common circuit, so let's use the negative feedback approach. For the negative feedback approach, we set the input differential voltage to zero volts due to the effect of negative feedback. We set the op-amp input currents to zero amps since op-amps have high impedance inputs. And then we analyze the circuit using Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's current law, Ohm's law, or whatever we need to to find the unknowns we're looking for. So let's start by setting the input differential voltage to zero. And let's set the input currents to zero. Now let's analyze the circuit. Let's start by filling in the currents and voltages that we can easily figure out. Writing these voltages and currents on the circuit can help us figure out ways to find the unknowns that we are trying to find. Looking at the inverting input node, we have 5 milliamps coming in from the current source and zero current going into the inverting input of the op amp. By Kirchhoff's current law, this means that we have 5 milliamps going through the 2k ohm resistor. Now that we know the current through this resistor, we can determine the voltage across the resistor using Ohm's law. 5 milliamps times 2k ohms is 10 volts. Now let's concentrate on how we might find the voltage VO. VO is the voltage across the 1k ohm resistor. For problems like this, we're typically trying to use Kirchhoff's voltage law or Kirchhoff's current law to write an equation whose only unknown value is the value we're looking for. Since all connections to ground act as one node, Let's connect all the grounds together to help us visualize the circuit more easily. With the grounds connected, it looks like we can write a KVL equation to solve for VO. The path shown here in green has all known voltages except for the unknown voltage, VO. Let's write the KVL equation. -V 
minus 3 plus 0 plus 10 plus negative 4 plus VO equals 0. This means VO equals negative 3 volts. Now let's find the current IX, which is current coming out of the op amp's output. We're looking for a way to write an equation whose only unknown value is IX. Let's try to write a KCL equation at the node connected to the op amp's output. I've circled this node in red. Let's sum all the currents entering this node. Entering from the top, we have 5 milliamps, the same current going through the resistor and voltage source in the negative feedback path. From the op amp's output, we have IX. Through the 1K ohm resistor, using Ohm's law, the current is VO divided by 1000, which is negative 3 over 1000, or negative 3 milliamps. Note that the reference direction for this current is down through the resistor, since VO is defined with the positive polarity at the top of the resistor. The current entering the node up through the resistor is positive 3 milliamps. So, summing the currents entering the node, we have IX plus 5 milliamps plus 3 milliamps equals 0. This means that IX is negative 8 milliamps. In other words, the op amp has a positive current flow of 8 milliamps going into its output. Sometimes people ask, if the current is 0 into both op amp inputs, then how is 8 milliamps flowing into the output? It seems that this is a violation of Kirchhoff's current law. However, what is not shown on this schematic are the op amp power supply connections. Whenever a textbook op amp circuit does not show power supply connections to the op amp, we just assume that the connections are actually present and connected to voltage sources. The op amp's output current comes from or goes to these sources, so KCL is not violated. So, we have just solved an example op amp circuit with negative feedback. Here are the important takeaways. 1. The first step in solving an op amp circuit is to use the decision tree to determine which approach to use. In the case of the circuit we just solved, we saw that there was a connection between the op amp's output and the op amp's inverting input, so we determined that negative feedback was present. Since we did not recognize the circuit as a common circuit, like an inverting amplifier, or non-inverting amplifier, we use the negative feedback approach to solve the circuit. 2. When using the negative feedback approach, start by assuming the input differential voltage is 0 volts and the current into each op amp input is 0 amps. 3. Then solve for the required unknown values using KVL, KCL, Ohm's law, etc. It usually helps to start out by writing in voltages and currents on the circuit that are fairly easy to calculate. This makes it easier to identify loops for KVL or nodes for KCL that can be used to find other unknown voltages and currents. So I hope this video has been useful and thanks for watching.